Hey everyone. So today I don't really have a specific thing I'm going to show off. I just wanted to uh, talk about a couple things because I seem to be getting a couple questions primarily around damage uh, fairly often. So I decided I'd do another damage video uh, and kind of go in depth a little bit more on how to set up health and things like that. And then some cool things you can do. I also wanted to kind of go into the uh, how Able works under the hood so that you could better understand uh, the system and then therefore better understand how to use the system and what you can do and what you can't. So first off, uh, I guess let's start with kind of how Able works under the hood because that's going to kind of drive all of this. So Able is one of the reasons that Able is so quick is that every ability is only instantiated once. So there's only one instance of any ability. There's little structures, super tiny little structures that are allocated every time an ability is executed, but they're very, very small. Uh, so uh, what that means is if I have three players, A, B, and C, and they're all casting this fireball spell, all of them are going to be internally running the same ability, the same object. So that means that this object can't have anything that's specific to A or specific to B or specific to C. They all have to be uh, stateless is, is the technical term for it. So uh, abilities are stateless, meaning they contain no state. Uh, they're the same. Uh, this logic is the exact same for this guy, this guy, and this guy. And in fact, if these enemies were attacking, they'd be pointing at this guy as well. So with that in mind, that means you can't store like per damage values on an ability, right? Because then all of these guys would be looking at that, that value. So, and there's not a way to, and that's, that's a purpose, that's a decision I did purposely because it keeps the memory very, very lean. It keeps uh, the speed and the network traffic down. So that's just, that's just a, a decision I went with for Able. Uh, uh, the gameplay ability system from Epic gives you an option to instantiate it, but I just, that just wasn't what I wanted to do. So uh, I wanted to err on the side of leaner memory and less complication. Uh, so, uh, so you'll see why this is important in just a second. So our abilities can't store state, but our characters can, right? Like we can have per variables for our characters. We just can't have any variables on, on our actual ability. So we can actually use that to our advantage. So if you look, so I have two dummies here. Dummy A, dummy B. And dummy B, I actually have a couple tags on. Or both these dummies have tags. So this dummy has a material.stone tag that I added. And if you don't know what tags are, uh, they're just uh, simple strings that you can import or create using a data table. And they're just, they're just arbitrary strings that you can assign and then use in various uh, gameplay fashions. So you can see I have material.stone, material.wood, element.fire, and status.burning. You can kind of see where this is going to go, right? So this guy is set to stone. So for all intents and purposes, he is a stone dummy. And this guy is set to wood. Well, I happen to have a fireball This one. And this fireball happens to be set to element.fire. So what do you think happens when wood meets fire, right? The dummy burns, right? And fire plus stone, nothing happens. And by the way, this particle effect like, I actually had an artist buddy of mine do this particle effect. He gave me this amazing sprite texture. And somehow, I still make it look hideous. 
because I'm a programmer and not an artist by any stretch. So, my bad, Joe. <laughs> but, uh, so we have our two dummies. We have a, a fire of dummy, or we have a fire skill being used on wood and being used on stone. Now, if I actually go out and I change this guy and I say, ah, I don't want you to be stone anymore. I want you to be wood. And then hit play, right? Now he burns too. So that's one of the benefits of kind of a uh, kind of data-driven systems. Now, if I put him back to, we'll put him back to stone. You could have wooden stone, and he still burn. Although that doesn't really make any logical sense. But so if I go in here, you'll see it actually takes. They have four health health points, and the fireball does one health per uh, per hit. So it takes four hits. Where this, the burn actually does damage in the background, so it only takes one. So let's kind of dig into how I have that set up, and we'll dig into health as well. So I'm going to open up my target dummy. These guys are all available. I'll make them all available as a download. So if you want to actually dig in here, you can. So we're going to ignore. This looks terrifying. Don't worry. We're actually going to deal with only a couple things. We're going to deal with this section right now, and then we're going to deal with this one in a section, in a, in a moment. So you can see right here, so for health, right, Unreal has a concept of a damage system, but they don't have a health system. So to do health, you actually have to add a couple variables. You need a current health, which is just a float, and you need a max health, which is just a float as well. And they, they're kind of self-explanatory, right? My current health is whatever my health is at a, any point in time, and my max health is the maximum that value can be. So when, and these are just exposed, so I can just set them to whatever. Uh, so when I have damage comes in, that comes in, I have a little method called update health that takes in the damage value, and then just basically says, hey, I'm gonna subtract my, my health, or this damage, from my current health, and then I'm just gonna clamp that between zero and whatever my max health is, and then set it. And if that value is zero or less than or equal to zero, it should never be less than zero because it's clamped. If it's less than or equal to zero, then I'm dead. So that's, this is health, right? Like this is your health system. Like this is, there's nothing fancy about this at all. Uh, and a lot of people I think assumed there was some other system in Unreal that would do all this for you. And now you just have to actually kind of do this yourself. But again, it's, it's two floats, right? Current health, max health. I pass in a damage, subtract that from my current health, clamp that to zero to whatever my max health is, and then set out that result. So this is my clamped result. So that's it. And then, you know, uh, if, if my value is less than or equal to zero, then I'm dead, right? Really simple. Now, Let's go into, so before I get into this, let's go into our fireball. So there's two parts to this fireball ability. One is actually spawning the fireball actor, which is just that little ball of fire, right? And then that ball of fire, when it hits something, actually launches this hit react that actually does the damage and plays that little explosion effect. So you can actually see that it's getting hit. So. You can see here we're just doing a damage of one to ourself because this this ability is run on the object that's hit. And that's it. But if I go and look at my my actual graph, I've overridden calculate damage for actor, which is called by apply damage, right? Uh, and this, this method gives you a chance to basically take this base damage, which I've set over here, right? I set it to one. And check uh, check against the actor it's, it's about to run against to do resist or vulnerabilities or whatever. Uh, but you can see here, I'm actually saying, all right, whatever I hit, if I can convert you into a target mannequin, I actually want to pass in save off this ability to that target mannequin. Because remember, 
I can't, this ability itself can't have any variables, right? It can't store off that, hey, I hit this guy for this much. I hit this guy for that much. It just, it can't. Uh, however, we can say, hey, you, uh, player one, you're about to get hit and you're about to get hit by this guy, right? You're about to get hit by this ability. So Epic's normal damage system doesn't let you, doesn't, doesn't take into account uh, where the damage came from if it's not an actor and abilities aren't actors, that'd just be too expensive. Uh, but we can make a method on our, uh, on our target dummy, or a variable rather, It just says, hey, I'm of type, you know, uh, a, I'm just an ability class variable, and this is my damage by ability. So when I receive damage, this guy should actually be set to whatever damaged me. And in our actual fireball, we're setting it, right? We're saying, hey, grab myself, which is the ability, get my class ID, and then just set that to... Uh, the damage by ability. So this gives us more information, right? This lets us know that, hey, I'm going to do some amount of damage and I was hit by this specific ability. So now, now that we actually know the ability that hit us, right, we can do some, some fun logic, right? So we go through here, we do our, hey, am I dead? If I'm dead, then I spawn a ragdoll. If not, Let's see if we can do some more fun stuff. Let's see what hit us, right? Let's see what we can do with that. So we can see, we can get our damage by ability, check to see if it's valid, which means you know we set it to something, right? And then we can get that ability's tag container. So if you remember, I had a tag on this guy called element.fire, right? So I can get this container, I can get all these tags, and compare them against my target mannequin's tags to see if there's any reactions I want to, you know, come out of that. So you can see I get my tag container. I have my character tags, which is just a, a, a gameplay tag container that's set on the character. That's what this field is right here, right? This material.wood, that's what that field is. And then I have a method called check burning. And all this does is take in two tag containers and say, okay, if I have, if one of those containers has element.fire set and the other container, the other set of tags has material.wood and I'm not burning, so I haven't had this status set to me because I don't want to continually, you know, have it loop. I just want it to burn once and then stop then I should be burning, right? Because, you know, wood plus fire equals burn, right? And so I can get that result. And I could obviously, if I wanted to, I could expand this out. I could have, oh, metal plus lightning equals shocked. Uh, and just chain a bunch of these together. Uh, if you're in C++, you could use like an enum bit field to set, specify a bunch of status el element, ailments and then, you know, do a do a bunch of just logic checks. These tags are super cheap. So, I mean, they, they basically boil down to integers. So doing a bunch of these tag checks is totally fine. Uh, in fact, it's, it's probably one of the better ways to do logic. So if coming out of here, I say, oh, well, I should be burning. Then I just get my burning passive and I just set it to my character. And then I reset my damage by ability because I don't want because I basically I want to reset all of this logic for the next time I get damaged right and if we go look at our burn passive you can see I set I play my burn particle so you can see I play my burn particle I set a tag that says I'm burning while this is on me and then it has just a simple uh, damage. And this one doesn't actually have anything set, so I'm not actually setting that ability at all. I haven't overloaded any of that stuff. So 
when I go back, so my my logic on uh, my target dummy is going to get to here, say it's not valid, and just stop. So I basically can control how often I want to go deep into this logic, right? How often I want to do all this. I don't have to do it every turn or every ability that damages me. I can only I can pick and choose which ones. So that's really it. Uh, so I hope this is, again, I didn't have a big thing for this. Uh, I like doing uh, flashy stuff when I can, just because I think it's fun for you guys, and it's fun for me as well. Uh, this was more a, let's talk about the nuts and bolts, and let's, you know, kind of go into the nitty gritty. But I hope it gives you some ideas about how you can use tags, uh, how you can basically set your character up with various fields and then populate those fields through uh, your abilities. So uh, there was someone who asked, I think it was Amon asked, Amon Anubis asked, asked on the forums how he could do multiple damage, or, or it may have been Iron Suit, but how he could do multiple damage because he wanted a damage for like uh, not just physical damage, but like mental damage and, you know, things like that. So something like this setup is how you would do that. You would just pass an array of damage values, basically, or additional damage values, and then apply them uh, in your damage, uh, in your in any damage event. And again, you could you know, clear the array after you've gone through and processed everything so you know it's not getting set again. So again, the big takeaway from uh, this that I really wanted people to clear up is is health is stupid, it's simple, right? It's it's a couple of floats, put it together. Uh, blueprints are very powerful uh, and, and fairly simple to use. So uh, there's a lot of ways Able and Blueprints uh, can kind of leverage each other. And, and that was the point of making the abilities actual Blueprints. Uh, and then the other big takeaway I, I want people to kind of wrap their heads around is this whole concept of these abilities are stateless, but you can store state on actual characters, right? So, so try and, and keep that in mind. And one quick, and that actually reminds me, one quick uh, gotcha is if you are going to be setting a field like this, you need to either make sure you're not doing uh, async calculate or be a hundred percent sure that the only thing that's ever going to access this field is this ability. Because otherwise you can get some nasty threading bugs, right? Like if, if two actors or if two systems happen to try and set this value at the same time, that's how you get a crash. So it's unlikely. Uh, in fact, you it's unlikely, but to be safe, don't use async calculate if you're going to do something like this. If you're going to store a bunch of state variables, just save yourself the, the headache. Turn off async calculate. Uh, and And just go from there. Uh, and if you, then if you want to get adventurous, turn it on and see what happens. But I make no guarantees <laughs> because threading bugs can be really nasty. And C++, or C++, C++ has various primitives to deal with things like that. Blueprints don't. So it's, it's, it's trickier for blueprints to deal with multi-threading. So just something to be aware of. Uh, but still, play with this. Uh, let your minds kind of uh, wander and... and uh, and uh, get you know with some come up with some creative ideas. I love seeing people's work. Uh, I've gotten a bunch of videos from people and screenshots, and it's super cool to see what people are doing with the system. So I hope this helped. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye.